welcome welcome to to uh, a flying site that we know locally as Abigelly Hill it's actually at Slandullis not Abigelly but uh, we call it Abigelly Hill because it's easier to say and it's a Welsh name I'll just put on the screen below this is a beautiful flying site and it gets a lot of interest from pilots who want to come and fly here because from from here you can fly over the now famous Gwick Castle that featured on the I'm a Celebrity Get Out of Here um, but the takeoff here is possibly one of the most challenging takeoffs certainly I personally know in um, North Wales um, it de demands a high level of ground handling um, skills so I thought I would do a, a just a particular talk on the takeoff itself show the topography show the hazards and then give some tips about how to fly from here safely so let's get started so looking at the takeoff it is a very large area to take off from but I would say from the outset and no circumstances attempt to top land here um, it's always in rotor and the rotor moves from place to place depending on wind speed and direction which I'll explain shortly so the flying site takes north to northeast its best direction is north northeast and it flies okay in a north and a northeast so we're looking out directly ahead from takeoff here now and I'm looking in a north direction so with a north northeast wind you're going to get rotor coming from the cliff edge and the trees over there and it's even more so and more apparent if the wind is northeast so this is the main cause of the rotor or one of the main causes of the rotor is the cliff edge um, takeoff so it's got a sheer cliff here I can't really show it in totality without standing too close to the edge but you get the picture there's a cliff there which is causing rotor um, on the takeoff here's a view of the takeoff looking to the east and there is a quite a heavy forest there which causes significant rotor when the wind is northeast to north northeast from this spot here I'm on the west end of takeoff and I'm looking across Landulis and in the far distance I can see Rose and Sea in the little arm. Now the reason I mention this side and pay particular attention to this is because there is another cliff similar to the one on the north takeoff here. Now I once saw a pilot lose control of his glider in a fresh northeasterly wind and he got dragged right across takeoff and got dragged off this off this cliff and he had um, quite a scary ride into the fields below by the caravan park in rotor trying to get down so this is why one of the reasons why i call out that your ground handling needs to be exceptional when it comes to picking your spot to launch from there is no right or wrong really it all depends on the day it all depends on the wind speed and the direction but be certain that there will be rotor during your launch attempt. So when you bring your glider up, it's going to dance around, it's going to collapse, it's going to move around. So this is why, just be honest with yourself, um, is your ground handling as good as it can be? And if, if it is, come here and give it a go. But the secret is just take your time. So let's have a look at landing options from here. So the fields at the bottom are private, the private farmer there. Um, so we cannot land in them, albeit the farmer has given his permission in an extreme emergency to land in one of those fields. If there is no land, livestock in there, so if there's a field with no livestock in, pick that one. If they've got livestock in, you can't use them. The bottom landing is actually on the beach across the ridge. So um, it's an easy glide, find the, the, the ridge is working, it is an easy glide from here to get to the beach. We're about 400 feet above sea level. Um, so the message is, if it's marginal, uh, just leave it. it. Only take off if you're sure you're gonna, you're gonna stay up. So we're finally in the air. We've taken our time and take off and we're in the air. Now the temptation would be to run down the ridge and fly to Emily's ta Tower and across to Quick Castle. But actually there's a house thermal that comes up in front of takeoff. But notice my position in this thermal. I am not taking the thermal behind the takeoff, behind that cliff face. And the reason for that is I don't want to get caught out low, over takeoff, and then have to fly for any potential rotor to get back into clean air. And here, look, a few turns later, the, the lift is, 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 is broadening out and I'm flying nicely and safely out in front. I don't need to fly on the ridge. I'm just taking that view. Again, as I come back round to face and take off, I'm 
Octane safely out in front and in this direction in the northeast, just not allowing myself to drift back over that takeoff. Again, as you can see, a very wide lift band when the thermals are working. Nice gentle lift. And I'm just enjoying the flight. Again, just checking my position to make sure that I'm not going close to the ridge when I don't need to, and staying well away from the uh, from the takeoff area. And just look at that view across Landellus down to Rosen Sea in the Little Orm. Beautiful. And at this stage of my flight, I'm now thinking about a flight down to Gwick Castle. Just one more turn, just to enjoy that view. Beautiful. Once again, Staying well away from takeoff. Here I am on the approach to Gwick Castle, and you can just see it coming into view in the top right of the screen. There are absolutely no bottom landings options here. So when approaching the castle, be sure that you're not going to go down. Secondly, Gwyth Castle faces in a north direction and I'm flying in a north-northeast wind. So I know I can't fly over the castle because the, the wind's in the wrong direction. So all I'm going to do on this flight is I'm just going to approach it and uh, take a good look and enjoy the view down over the castle. In a north wind, you can continue along the ridge and fly over the castle for a complete bird's eye view. That's enough for me and I'm just going to fly back down the ridge to towards Emily's Tower. Flying down to land on the beach. As a rule of thumb, I leave myself a minimum of 100 feet above takeoff to ensure I get to the beach with plenty of height. There are significant obstacles to cross with two caravan parks, the A55 and the railway tracks. And it's a nice glide across and then just put a nice landing on the beach. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful. Good luck when you go to pay a visit. Enjoy your flight.